fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the full face of makeup that I hate challenge. Is it a challenge or is it just a thing or more bob? I don't know. We're going to be doing it though. I'm going to be using Strictly products that I really dislike. I love these videos. I watch them all the time and I've always wanted to do one and I can't believe I never have before. So this morning I sat down, I examined my makeup collection and I picked out all the products that I genuinely hate. <laughs> I also want to say hi if I do have any new viewers watching this right now. Yesterday Kathleen Lights uploaded a video of her most underrated beauty gurus and I was so honored and I could not believe that I made the list. I was actually the first one in the video, not that that matters, I don't think it was ranked, but it was just such an honor to have her talk about my channel and why she likes my channel and to know that she has been watching me for a very long time. I literally cried my eyes out. It's just so nice to hear someone that you love and really admire and really respect like say something nice about you. It's such a big deal to me and I just want to say thank you to Kathleen and thank you to all the wonderful subscribers of hers who decided to check out my channel channel and subscribe and might be watching this now. A few facts about me. My name is Shay. I live in New Jersey. I have three cats. I'm a Capricorn and I don't believe in zodiac signs. But that is something a Capricorn actually might say because we're very analytical. So I don't know if that's me just being a Capricorn or if I really don't believe. Wow, my mind just like exploded thinking about that. Like am I just being a Cappy or what? I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with the video guys. I'm first going to start with brows. So the brow, I have two brow products actually because I don't like either one of them. The first brow product that I absolutely do not like is Soap and Glory Archery 2-in-1 Brow. I love the idea of it but I really don't like it. So this is a brow pencil as well as a brow gel which I do think is cute and cool especially if like you travel or you just keep it in your makeup bag you can have both things but I hate the size of like the pencil thing or can you see this it's like super thick and fat and angled and it's a little like sharp to me like it's super dry and harsh it's not smooth and buttery like benefit brows which is my favorite brow pencil the other thing I don't love about it is because it has the brow gel on the end you don't have like a dry spoolie to shape up your brows and that's what I prefer when I'm you know combing my brows out so I just start from the front and I kind of fill it in like so. I will say I like how it looks. It's a fine looking brow pencil when it's applied and like when it's on your face. It's just a little harsh and like sharp to me and a little dry. And you guys know I love Soap and Glory products, but this was just not one of my favorites. So now that it's all filled in, I typically will take a dry spoolie, but I'm gonna use the gel because that's what, you know, comes with the brow thing and it blends it out fine but I just I like to do it in two separate steps you know I don't like to use a wet spoolie to fade my brows out because then I'm bringing brow gel like all the way out here and that's not typically where I'd want brow gel but I like to fade that part obviously so it looks like just a little more natural the second brow product that I am not a fan of at all is by makeup forever this is the brow liner when I saw this I was like okay that could be kind of cool I hope it's not too harsh and then it was like way too harsh it's like super duper pigmented and for me it's just too pigmented because it just looks literally like marker like I just hate it so I'm gonna use it to fill in the ends of my brows that got a little sparse from the brow gel before it just looks like brow paint or something I don't know I would much prefer like a dip brow by Anastasia type situation yeah not a fan I'm just not a fan so then I want to clean up my brows I'm gonna use a concealer that I really don't love the concealer I'm gonna use to clean up my brows is actually the elf concealer and highlighter I don't like this and I don't get it I think that this is too white and it has shards of like glitter in it I don't get the highlighter of it I just don't and the concealer for me is just too sheer I would much prefer a more full coverage concealer I have used it and I can definitely get by with it it's not like oh this is terrible I can't ever use this ever it's just really it's almost like watered it down is how I would maybe describe the concealer but anyway I'm just gonna use this to clean up the brows. Oh my god, I hate how my brows look today. These are not my favorite products. So yeah, this concealer definitely worked for carving my brows because I didn't need a whole lot of coverage there, but when I use it like under my eyes, I don't love it. Okay, next for eyeshadow. I am so damn nervous to use this again. I have not used it since I had a horrific video filmed on it. It was my first time trying it, and you guys probably already know what this is. This is Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. I mean, like, does it even need any more words? Holy shit, I am so scared to use this again. It was such a bad situation for me. So, so I don't really have an eyeshadow primer that I hate, and I typically use concealer for eyeshadow primer if I'm not using my little Bella Pierre shadow base you guys know I love. So I'm just gonna continue using this e.l.f. concealer. Look, oh my god, I already got makeup all over my hand from this freaking subculture! Okay, just going to pop some of this on the old lid as you do, and just blend that out right quick. 
So first, to start off this look, I'm going to jump into the shade Dawn right here. Right here, right here. Sorry, my aim was a little off there. I'm taking it out with the E40 Blending Brush from Sigma. They said don't swirl. I think I just swirled, but I'll try not to swirl the next time. I watched a few videos of like people who really loved the Subculture palette and was like, everyone's using it completely wrong. So I'm trying to use it the correct way this time, if maybe it was my fault last time I didn't like it. So here goes nothing. I'm going to pop this in the crease, lightly swirling my brush. So far, so good. All the way to the inner corner. I've been really wanting to give this palette a second try because I just, I don't like to hate things, you know? I want to love it. And I bought this with my own money. It was not set in PR or anything. I really, really wanted to love this. So I was so disappointed in my first video. I haven't tried this shade yet. So I want to try this. This is called Edge. Pouncing in the palette like that. That's all I'm going to take because a lot of people said the problem is when you swirl your brush So I'm trying not to swirl tap off any excess, but there shouldn't be too much because I hardly touched it And I want to work this on the inner corner. I don't even know like what kind of look I'm going for I'm just just jump it in all willy-nilly. Yo, speaking of willy-nilly. I don't know why that made me think of willy-nilly Can you believe all this lashify shit? Damn. I'll be honest, I felt bad for the company and Manny until I saw the full live stream. I could not believe what this chick was saying. She was calling all these people idiots and morons. I couldn't believe it. And I understand why she was so hostile because it was like her baby, her company, her patented company and products were being like dragged through the mud. But her reaction was unreal and i'm really upset that she handled it the way she did because this is what i was actually saying on twitter yesterday even though manny didn't have good luck with it i was like okay he doesn't like it but you know what i think i want to try that i was like that looks really interesting and i would love to have lashes that i could have on for a few days in a row i really was actually gonna buy it still even though it got a negative quote unquote review and then that live stream and that reaction and all their posts started coming out and I was like, holy shit, I can't buy this now. I cannot give my money to this woman. All right, now I'm gonna start getting into the deeper colors, which is where my video got a little messy last time. I'm sticking with this same brush because it's been working so far. This is the Sigma Beauty E40. I'm gonna go into the shade All Star and again, just a touch. That's pigmented. That's See, I just touched it once and that's a lot. So no swirl. By the way, if you like my nail polish, I will link it down below. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna start adding it to this outer corner. I will say what I'm noticing the second time around is that is a lot of pigment for just dipping my brush in very lightly once. Do you know what I mean? So there is a chance I could have been going into the palette very aggressively last time. Oh, I'm gonna be so embarrassed and mad at myself. I read this palette to filth. I really did. I was like, this is awful. <laughs> I'm gonna feel like a dinkus. I haven't gone back into the palette yet. This is still just that same brush of shadow, which is getting me pretty far between the two. I really like that. Holy shit, it was my fault. It was my fault. I think it was my fault. Okay, I've gone into the palette one more time. Tap, tap, tap. Just wanted that a little deeper. Okay, it's it's blending really well into the other shade. I think I used this wrong. Damn it! <laughs> I didn't want to be wrong. I did not see this going this way. I'll be honest with you. I thought this was going to be awful. That looks pretty good though, doesn't it? From there, gonna stick with the same brush. Don't hate me. I'm not I'm not switching brushes because this is working for me. I'm gonna go into the shade Roxy. Okay, and I'm gonna lightly blend this over the lid. So the key is just to go in super light, super gentle, and not super aggressively like maybe I'm used to doing. I'm about to feel so bad. I'm about to go delete my freaking subculture video because I feel really bad at this very moment. Wow, you guys, I think I effed up. I would formally like to apologize to Anastasia Beverly Hills because this is actually going quite splendidly and it was my fault. It was my fault, I'll admit it. I'm gonna jump into Rowdy, which is what makes me the most nervous. It's the color that I had the hardest time with. Barely dipped my brush in, tapping off any excess, and just gonna add this ever so slightly on the outer V. Gosh, I feel like an idiot. I feel like a complete moron. It's going on fine. Wow, it was my fault. I fudged up. I did. I love this eyeshadow, you guys. It was my fault. Can I say that enough? Have I said it enough? It was my fault. I'm going to take a little detail brush. This is the Domed Utility E34 from Sigma, and I'm gonna spritz it with a little setting spray. And I want to jump into the shade electric and I'm just going to add that on the inner corners. <sighs> wow, I really freaking like this so much better this second time around. Anastasia, Norvina, I apologize 
for my video where I trashed your palette because it was my fault. I was wrong and I'm so sorry. I feel really bad now. I actually really do. I did not see this coming, you guys. I thought this was going to be a shit show. I'm happy I did this. I'm happy I can say that I do really like the Anastasia subculture palette. I just needed to use it differently. And I'm a moron for not figuring that out. I apologize, Anastasia. Next, for eyeliner, this one, again, I don't like and it's also from Soap and Glory. I'm sorry, Soap and Glory. I love your body products. The makeup just is kind of eh to me. This is the Super Cat Liquid Black Liner and what I mostly don't like about it is just the shape of the actual tip. It's very thick as opposed to my new favorite. It is the best. I swear to you it is so matte black and the brush is so movable yet firm and it just creates the best liner I've ever done. The new Sigma Beauty Liquid Liner Pen I just much much prefer. I don't know if you can tell but it's much smaller in tip size. It's a little sleeker and this one's just really really stiff so it's a little hard to get a delicate nice wing. If you haven't tried the Sigma liner yet, I will link it down below. It is fantastic. Yeah, it's just a little thick in there. And the formula is just, it's just not as black as I would like it to be. Yeah, watered down is just the only way I can think to describe how it looks, in my opinion. This is one that I'll do a few layers of. Try to get the depth that I want in the black. So I did one, and then I will typically go back over it a second time. So it's a little shiny. It's not matte, and I like a super duper matte black. I got a fine line with it. It looks fine. It's just not my favorite. I don't like how thick it is and I really don't like to have to go over it two to three times to get the depth that I want. Next I'm going to use another liner for my waterline and this one actually might surprise you guys because you know I am a diehard fan of ColourPop Cosmetics and I loved these when they first came out. The problem with them was at that point we didn't really know how long they would last and it turns out they don't last that long. This is the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner. This is in the shade Overboard. Now, I love these liners. Again, you guys know I do the live swatching videos where I try every single product on my eyes, face, lips, whatever the product is. I did do that for their gel liners in the pot as well as their pencils, and I loved it in the video. They looked fantastic. The problem is over a month, two months, they dry out. They dry out real bad. Okay, this one's still good. This one's still good. I was nervous. Some have lasted longer than others, but I was really disappointed recently when I went to use some for a video and they mostly were all dried out. Again, I'm gonna take the shade Overboard on my waterline. I loved their color selection though, so I do hope they're working on maybe improving the formula or maybe even the packaging. Maybe it was a packaging issue. And I'm gonna real quick just blend that out with my finger before it dries. Next for mascara, this was again, something I originally really thought I liked. And then after a while of using it, it was terrible. And I don't know why I loved it so much in the beginning. This is the Revlon Bold Lacquer by Grow Luscious Mascara. It's a length and volume mascara. And I had read online that it's supposed to help grow your lashes. Now, I don't know if that's true. I mean, it says by Grow Luscious. So I would imagine there's like some growth formula in here. If that's the case, it never grew my lashes. And I don't even think that's possible for a mascara, but I didn't like it. I'm gonna throw this on. I think it has, is it a fiber mascara too? Yeah, it's a fiber mascara, but you don't even see fibers anywhere on the packaging. That would be nice to know. I just never really noticed anything super different or great about this mascara. I loved it at first and then after a few weeks of using it, I was just kind of like, eh, I actually don't think I love it. I'm going to wait to do my bottom lash line until we're finished with foundation and everything because I want to blend a little eyeshadow on my lower lash line as well and I don't want it to get all mixed with the concealer. So let's move on to the face. So first for primer, I think that this brand was in the right place at the right time as far as primers go because these are legendary, they're iconic, they have built their entire makeup empire upon these primers. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish in the Color Correcting Blend. But to be honest, I don't even love the majority of their primers, but they are so well known for their primers. But this whole line that they have, they have like a green one, a purple one, a blue one. They're just, I don't know to me. I don't even love face primers to begin with. I love my Fenty Beauty one, but that's my favorite. Other than that, I typically will skip primers because I just don't see a difference. I just don't notice a difference in my foundation application or anything like that. And they kind of feel a little greasy too, now that I'm applying it. I'm I'm like, oh, that feels a little greasy. So that just basically ghosted me out. It made me super duper white, which is fine, but I don't consider that a color corrector. I consider that just a, I guess a brightener, but I'm putting foundation on top of it. So like who even cares? So next for foundation, this is a newer foundation. It actually just came out recently. And I don't know why I even bought it because I hate this type of 
that oh my god it's so I just got like chills. I got goosebumps everywhere. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion Foundation with SPF 15. I cannot stand holes. You guys know this about me. I'm gonna get sick. I once threw up because I had bitten into a Hershey's, like a little Hershey's kiss. And it's right when they came out with the air ones. And oh, I'm gonna throw up. They have holes in them. Holy crap, why did they do that? But anyway, I bit into it, I looked at it, and I was in my friend's basement, and the texture, the chocolate, made me throw up. I threw up all over their couch, all over the floor. I wasn't sick, I wasn't drinking. It was just the fact that there were so many holes, and it was so gross. Despite the holes that you know I don't like in here, I also don't like the coverage of this foundation. I don't even think I've used this on camera yet, but I bought it a few weeks ago, and I don't like it. I don't think there's enough coverage, it's so gross. This is the shade Nude Beige. I was looking for a foundation for when I'm self-tanned, which I am right now. I'm wearing Loving Tan. If you guys wanted to get a free tanning mitt, you can use my code. I believe it's ShayXO, but I'll confirm that. Anyway, I just did not like the coverage of this at all. I don't like applying things with sponges like this. And I know you don't have to. You're free to use your own sponge or a brush, but all in all, I was just not a fan. It's also like really fragrance to me. It smells nice. It smells really nice actually, but it's too smelly to be going on my skin, I feel like, you know? Ugh, I hate looking at it. I do like the shade. I will say I really like the shade for when I'm self-tanned. I also think it would be nice like if you're traveling a lot, if you like to keep a little touch-up product in your bag, but you didn't want to bring, of course, like a whole bottle of liquid foundation, I think you actually might really like it, especially if you don't need full coverage. I'd say this is about light to medium coverage. The other thing is that for me, it did not wear very long throughout the day. Also, for people who are more acne prone like me, the fact that you're dipping your sponge in and then it's going on your face and then you're dipping your sponge again and then on your face, it's just a lot of transferring of bacteria back and forth. And I just don't know how you would avoid that. Next for concealer, I'm gonna keep using the one you guys know I don't like. This is the e.l.f. concealer and highlighter. It's in the shade light in case you were curious. It's just not enough coverage for me. And then I'm just gonna blend that in with my F88 brush from Sigma. It blends nicely and it has a nice glow. I'll say that. So if you didn't like a lot of coverage in your concealer, you might really like it. I would probably rebuy this, but the way I use it, I'd probably put my like full coverage concealer on first and then layer a little bit of this on top of it to kind of get that natural glow. So it definitely doesn't look bad as you can see there. It's just a little light in coverage for me. Next for setting powder, the only one I don't absolutely love right now, and I don't know if they have a lighter shade of it that maybe I would like better, is this um, Becca Soft Light Golden Hour. It's like super pricey. They sent me this in PR. It's just a little too like peachy pink for me. I don't know if it's necessarily, it's not meant for the under eye area. I would only use a translucent setting powder for that, but I don't have one that I hate. So that's kind of tricky. I'm just going to go ahead and use this. But I feel like even when it's on my face, it grabs my foundation in such a way that it kind of alters and changes the color of my makeup. And I just try to use it sheerly so it doesn't do that, but it just does. And again, it's called golden hour. So of course I would imagine that's exactly what it would, ow, fuck, I poked my eye, Jesus Christ. Oh God, that hurts. Man down, man down. It just really oxidizes once it hits that foundation. I'm gonna take the rest of that powder with a bigger brush now and use it to set the rest of my face. I just wish they had like a translucent one or something a little lighter. And then in that same sense, do they have one deep enough for all skin tones? Will they have one for deep skin tones too? Because I can't imagine this working for everybody. There just can't be a one shade fits all in powder. Like, let's be real. And I also don't like when brands try to do that. So hopefully they have other shades. Maybe I would like a little bit better, but this just changes my foundation color too much. Also, it's just such a bitch. Like to get it back in the cap because it's so weirdly shaped and it's so, such a fine powder. Like I can't get it out of the cap right now. And then you start to get it like all around the bottle. It's just a big old mess. Oh my God, this is so messy. This is so messy. One thing though, doesn't this packaging look like the new um, KKW packaging? Her powders have like this same circle, but it's in a square. Very interesting. KKW in cahoots with Becca? Let me know. Next, I'm gonna jump back into subculture and I'm going to add a little shadow on my waterline. I think since we used that shiny bronze, I wanna use the bronze in this palette too called Adorn, which I don't think I've used before. Barely took any again. I'm excited that I'm liking this palette. I'm really excited. I did not see that coming. And I just want to smudge that along my lower lashes. That's really pretty, isn't it? Mm. I also wanna take a little bit more of the electric shade and bring that a little farther across on my lower lash line. So now I'm gonna throw on my lower lashes, add a little mascara, 
but this is boring as sin so I'm gonna go ahead and skip through this part I just kind of had the thought to add to the eyes again you guys are gonna judge me because I keep going back in with this palette and it was supposed to be a product I hate I wasn't expecting to like it again you guys I'm sorry that I'm actually <laughs> kind of liking this palette now I'm gonna jump into the shade Roxy one more time and I think it would be kind of pretty to fan that out on my lower lash line as well I'm like definitely gonna tweet an apology to Anastasia Beverly Hills on Twitter for doing such a crappy video originally with this palette because I really like it today. I'm gonna bring that out. Oh yeah, I'm glad I did this. I like what it's adding down there. I needed like just a little something extra. So next let's jump to bronzer. This is the Too Faced Melting Powder Bronzer in the shade Toasted Peach. Not for me. Um, maybe it's not meant for my skin tone. I think maybe if you're more medium skin, this will be really pretty on you. The thing I hate about it is that golden sheen to it. For me, just bronzer, ugh, I just don't want to glow. What don't people understand? Like, if I want to glow, I want to use a highlighter. I want to use something like that. But in my bronzer, like, that's just for creating shape in my skin. I just don't want to glow from that but again it might not be best suited for my skin tone it might be better on someone with more medium skin to deep skin um I wouldn't say deep skin because I would imagine it would probably just disappear and it makes me sad because I love how it looks until I start to notice that golden glow in it because it really grabs the texture of my skin and I don't have the best skin texture to begin with so for my bronzer I just want something nice and matte and natural and then I'll add my glow where I want my glow it's very blendable I hope they come out with like a matte version of these little toasted peach cheeky thingies because that I'd be all over I'd be all over that like white on rice um, but let's jump to the forehead and the forehead is actually where I wouldn't mind a little glow in my bronzer so I like it fine up here because it just kind of you know I don't know makes my forehead look like a bronzed unicorn which is fantastic absolutely great I'll be honest I won't stop using it I don't hate it so much that I'm like oh my god this is shit I'll never use this again this I'll probably just stick to my forehead region I love its blendability though oh I really hope they extend the shade range of this and the um, formula to like a matte version straight up matte but that golden sheen in it it's pretty on the forehead not pretty on the cheeks so for blush this is the bare minerals awakening radiance but I don't apply it to this specific color I hate the majority of the bare minerals loose blushes because they contain so much freaking glitter and I remember when I was working in store like selling bare minerals trying it on clients the one thing about bare minerals customers is that they are some of the most brand loyal customers customers you will find. They do not want to mix blushes from another brand into their Bare Minerals foundation. They want to use the system. They want the warmth. They want the radiance. They want the mineral veil. And they do not want to buy a blush from another brand. And I get that because Bare Minerals uses really great products. They're a little bit better for your skin. But when I would try the blushes on a customer who was looking for a new blush, we would open them all up. I'd lay them all out. And I would discuss the pros and cons of each blush and why I think one would work, why I would think one wouldn't work. And the case was always that they really liked a blush color but there was so much glitter in the blush and they just didn't want to sparkle in the office. Most ladies it had to do with their profession and they felt silly wearing glitter on their cheek and when I applied it it did look like glitter on a lot of them and when you do have more textured skin as you age you don't necessarily want glitter on your face you just don't. This is the shade I'm going to use um, it's the one that I thought has quite a bit of glitter in it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell probably not just by looking at it but there's a lot of glitter in there. I was so happy to see they came came out with pressed powdered blushes because I imagine um, people will like those a lot more but you can just see it's just it's really metallic it's really sheeny shiny a lot of people don't want this much sheen in a blush it makes me sad because I actually really love this color but I don't like the metallic finish that it gives okay so next we are moving on to highlighter and this is arguably the thing I was most nervous and scared to tell you guys I am absolutely not a fan of and it's weird because I remember when it first came out I don't know if I was like dazed by my excitement and I actually purchased two backups which got annoying because of the whole it was supposed to be limited edition and then it ended up being permanent and now I have like three of these and I don't like it anymore but when it first came out I loved it I really thought I loved it and since I've tried more highlighters and I've you know purchased different highlighters I feel like after a few years I'm more familiar with what I truly like on my skin and I'm not just buying things because of the hype because of the collaboration with another youtuber who I love I just feel like my makeup preferences have changed a lot and with that some of the things I thought I loved and I was really excited about no longer do it for me and again I don't want this to be taken as any hate towards her I don't even think it's her product 
product anymore. I don't think they're in collaboration. I think it's just a product. I don't, I don't like champagne pop. 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 Oh my god, I feel so bad saying it. I do. I genuinely feel bad because I love Jaclyn Hill. I love her videos. And this was such an exciting moment. I was like so excited for Jaclyn with her Becca collaboration, but I just don't like champagne pop. And again, it could be just because of my skin tone. And if it suits deeper skin tones better, that's freaking awesome. And keep it. I'm glad it's out there because there's not enough products for women and men of color, as we already know. For me personally though, I don't like it anymore. I don't know why I was so hype and crazy about it for so long. And again, no offense to Jacqueline, I'm still so proud of her and I would buy three of these again just to support her, but dang, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So <laughs> let's, let's pop this on. It's just, I don't know. Like it's okay when I'm directly in the light like that, I like it just fine. Like if I could just always have a ring light in front of me, that would be amazing. But as soon as I turn, it like gets muddy to me. It looks dirty. It just, it no longer looks pretty. I only like it when I'm right in the sunlight or in a ring light or with camera flash on, but just as like a normal everyday highlighter wear, it just gets dirty. I feel like when you turn right here, it's pretty, pretty, pretty shiny. And then, oh, where'd it go? I don't like it. Do not want you to feel insulted in any type of way if champagne pop is like your highlight goals and you love it so much. I totally get it because I was there too. I loved it when it first came out. It's the only thing I would wear. And now out of the Becca highlighters, I think I'm most partial to Moonstone. It gives a nice glow like directly in the light. Don't you just see that like dark streak it makes on my nose when I'm looking up? Sure, in the light, like yes, that's amazing. But as soon as you like bring your eyes to like eye level with someone, it's like this weird dark mark down my nose. Yeah, it's okay. It's just okay to me, but I definitely no longer reach for it every single day. Last but not least, you guys, this was a little tricky for me because it, honestly, there's not a lot of lip products I absolutely hate. These are the NYX Cosmetics Lingerie Liquid Lipsticks. To me, they were a little drying, actually like super drying, and I just did not like how they looked on my lips. I actually bought all of the shades and I think I've never used them in a video because I just was not happy with them. I'm gonna mix these two shades that I have here. I have Embellishment and Baby Doll, and I love the colors. I'm sad that I don't actually like the formula because I think the colors are really, really pretty. See, there's like clumps. There's already like clumps on my lips. I know this color doesn't really go with the eyes at all. I'm sorry about that. And this is the shade Baby Doll. I just don't love them. I just don't love them. Alright fam, that is it for my full face using products I hate video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, please take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my preferences, but it does not reflect on the products themselves and I want you to make your own decisions and if there's something I mentioned that you actually really love, for example, I know a lot of people love the NYX lingerie lips, please don't take offense and I totally understand if I'm using it wrong or if you think just whatever. Whatever the case may be, do not take offense to it. I do not mean to offend you and I'm sure the products are all actually pretty great and maybe I'm just not using them right I don't know I just don't want you to think that you're using crap makeup because that's not the case we all are gonna love stuff and hate stuff and that's going to vary between all of us all in all I want to say this video was actually really fun to do and I'm so excited that I did because it actually like kind of made me re-venture into Anastasia subculture palette and I ended up really loving the look I love the shadows this time I did not have any of the problems that I had before and that's because I completely changed the way I I was dipping into the product, the way I was blending it, the amount that I was using, it truly changed it for me and I'm happy to say that I love it now and I'm excited to use it again. For a list of products I used today, check my bottle box down below. I will link everything for you guys so you can check it out. Thank you all so much for watching and again, thank you and hello to any new subscribers I might have who came over from Kathleen's video. You have no idea how much I appreciate you coming to check out my channel. It's one thing to just, you know, watch a video and listen, but to actually leave her channel to come check out mine and subscribe and all of that really meant the world to me. So thank you so very much and I hope you enjoy my channel. And yeah, I can't wait to get to know you. And I love you guys. Shout out to all my shaveters who have been here since day one. You guys are the best. I love you guys and I will talk to you again soon. Bye!